physical royalty. She's been honored by kings and is known as the voice of Asia. Get ready to enter what is known as the CT zone. Siti Nurhaliza is the most successful and celebrated Malaysian singer of the new millennium. She's such a star. The countryside girl with conservative ways has mesmerized the entire country with her golden voice. You love Siti, you don't like Siti, you hate Siti. You cannot deny the fact that she can sing. Even her critics struggle to find anything wrong with her. She's just born for life. The most respected artist in the Malay music industry still wows her audiences two decades later. And if there's one word to describe Siti, probably the word is gifted. In July 2006, Siti Nurhaliza, Malaysia's most conservative and innocent pop star, makes a shocking announcement. She was going to marry a divorcee. That was a real crack. People were like, is it for real? Is it for real? Is it for real? First question, I tanya Siti. Siti, siapa lelaki itu? The singer, who had never been officially linked to anyone, was now courting controversy on a scale never before seen in her career. The thing is, ah, finally, it's not, she's not so perfect after all. Like, 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 we're playing in our mind. Is it that she's going to be married? Is it that she's going to be married? Is it that she's going to be Siti Nohaliza? It's very difficult. After 16 years at the pinnacle of Malaysian pop, and with 15 studio albums and over 200 awards to her name, the question on everybody's lips was, would marriage mean the end of City's successful career? Siti Nurhaliza Tarudin was born in 1979 in the small village of Kampung Awah Temerlo in rural Pahang, Malaysia. The third of seven siblings, she grew up in a two-room flat in the Kuala Lipis police barracks where her father was stationed as a police officer. Abah dulu ketika tu baru pangkat corporal. Corporal saja uh, gajinya tak cukup lah sebenarnya kalau nak ikutkan dengan adik-adik yang ramai. To supplement the family income, Siti sold traditional Malay cakes made by her mother, Siti Salma. Mula-mula malu, malu saya jerit pun slow. Kuih, kuih kan? <laughs> At nine years old, the selling of her mother's cakes may well have been the very start of her singing career. Lama-lama saya saya dah jadi macam uh, vocal test vocal. Saya jual, saya menyanyi, saya cak saya cakap kau kuat, kue kue semua kan. Jadi lain macam sih kan. City had grown up around music. Her mother was a traditional songstress in her younger days, whilst her grandfather was a traditional local musician. Saya sebenarnya uh, seorang yang suka menyanyi di rumah, sampaikan arwah ayah saya pun beli set karaoke. Home karaoke singing was just a start. With her family's support, Young City was soon performing for small audiences accompanied by a live band. Masa itu saya tak tak fikir tentang orang lain. <laughs> saya tengah fikir uh, saya menyanyi dengan saya berdebar, saya nervous semua kan. Sampai saya nak menangis sambil menyanyi. Band Mang Kawin ni yang memberi di pendedahan awal untuk dia menjadi seorang penyanyi yang versatile. Pop lah, you know, rock lah, dan termasuklah tradisional. Mungkin orang yang tengok persembahan saya itu mengatakan saya boleh menyanyi dan kerana itu uncle saya bawa saya membuat persembahan di banyak tempat. Nah, kita dah habis sedap ni suara ni. Siapa yang nyanyi? Kita menyangka kan memang orang yang dah dewasa tau. With her uncle at the helm, Siti and her cousins formed a band and spent weekends performing traditional and popular Malay songs for small local audiences, especially at Malay weddings. During the week, however, it was back to school as usual. Saya juga seorang yang sangat aktif dalam bidang sukan. Dalam pertandingan apa sukan di sekolah pun saya akan masuk bermula dengan uh, marathon di apa sekolah tadika. 
If City was competitive in sports, she was more so in singing. Since the age of 12, City would join singing competitions in and around her town. And in 1994, City took a big step and auditioned for the region's biggest talent search competition, Asia Bagus. Saya terlalu mentah, malu pun ada, segan. Just menyanyi menyanyi je. Maknanya menyanyi yang mungkin tak tak perasaan tu belum keluar habis kan? City was out of her league and did not make it through. Her elder brother Ai, however, got his big break instead. A very talented singer, Ai was spotted by a talent scout who offered him a recording contract in Kuala Lumpur. City was envious. Uh, City nak jadi artis, nak ikut pergi Kuala Lumpur. So Abai cakap, Siti, uh, kalau nak jadi artis kena kurus. Sebulan selepas tu, bila balik tak sangka. Tengok dia betul-betul bekerja keras untuk kurus. Determined to follow in her brother Ai's footsteps, City, now 16, wanted to join a popular national singing competition called Bintang HMI. Uji bakat yang terakhir tu, kemudian baru abang saya beritahu dengan ayah untuk minta izin dan ayah pun cakap, ah, okeylah, cubalah kenapa tak kan. City enjoyed a three-hour bus journey and a rain set to Kuala Lumpur accompanied by Ai. But she arrived late and the auditions were over. After much pleading, however, City was given one opportunity to perform. Her performance was flawless. She impressed the judges and got through to the next round. Mingguan saya bertanding di Alusta. Yeah, first time saya naik kapal terbang. <laughs> the small town girl was determined to sing her heart out, especially since the preliminary rounds were now going to be broadcast on TV nationwide. First impression was that she's very young, and everybody was talking about this kampung singer that come from nowhere and that could really sing. I was just uh, having my dinner with my wife. Suddenly, I heard this beautiful voice. I took my plate and went to the living room. I asked my wife to try to this voice. And after that, I was convinced that this girl could be a star one day. City made it through to the finals. <laughs> Her performance truly impressed the judges. Juara Bintang HMI 1995, Siti Nurhaliza Tarude. Saya memang tak sangka bila menjadi juara itu. The innocent city was about to be catapulted into the musical big league. At age 16, Siti Nurhaliza had won her first national singing competition. Bintang HMI 1995. Selepas menang Bintang HMI, memang banyak tawaran yang saya terima daripada label uh, syarikat antarabangsa dan inilah syarikat uh, lokal iaitu SRC. Surya Records, also known as SRC, needed to move fast if they were to secure this newly found talent. We went to uh, hometown Lipis to sign up. But signing up the young city Nurhaliza was not as easy as it seemed. Everyone still had to go through one man, her father. Aruh ayah Siti dia dia seorang yang tegas. Dia tak nak orang main-main. Mereka uh, boleh berjanji yang SRC tak akan ganggu lah kerja-kerja sekolah atau waktu sekolah saya kan. With a record deal signed, Siti's career as a recording artist began. During the week, she was a regular secondary school girl. On weekends, she travelled back and forth to Kuala Lumpur, accompanied by her mother, to record her debut album. Perjalanan kami tu kadang-kadang ada yang uh, tertinggal bas, ya, yeah? uh, ada yang saya naik bas lompat-lompat. <laughs> Maknanya lipi-lipi bentuk-bentuk rau uh, ataupun rau uh, bentung Kuala Lumpur. The first six months were tough for the new starlet. It was clear she had a lot to learn. As a singer, she's excellent, but she's still raw. 
Saya tak pernah pergi kelas vokal, tak pernah belajar not, tak pernah belajar muzik. Tapi bila dalam studio, di situ saya belajar dengan uh, Adenan Abu Hassan. Dia yang mengajar saya teknik nyanyian. Kelas vokal saya adalah di dalam studio. Less than half a year after her Bintang HMI win, Siti Nurhaliza's eponymous debut album was released on the 1st of April 1996. Album cover? Mm-hmm. Jam. Yes. First time I heard the voice, I was like, hey, there's something about the voice. It is something innocent, something pure, but it's something that I haven't heard in a long time. I proposed her name and said, can I interview this girl, give her a page kind of thing. The reaction from my editor was like, hmm, no lah, too early. Her first single from the album, Jarat Pachintaan, was warmly received. It wasn't until City teamed up with a male group, Two by Two, and recorded a duet called Ka Mawarku that she began to turn heads. <laughs> Although City was finally getting noticed, she would prove very inexperienced with media exposure. Kami buat penggambaran di air terjun, saya diberikan pakaian, apa semua. Yelah, saya ni orang kampung, saya mana lah pernah pakai skirt pendek. Posing lebih-lebih sikit, saya kurang selesa lah. Close proximity with a male counterpart often fuel public speculation about a relationship. The Malaysian audience, Malay audience especially, they can be quite simplistic, you know, like, one plus one is two, so Siti has a poster of her and so and so. Are they seeing each other kind of thing? Jadi, uh, benda tu semua selalu bermain dalam fikiran saya. Sejak daripada insiden tu, okay, Siti, okay, Siti Pekat, okay, Siti kena beritahu wartawan ni uh, tentang apa yang Siti tak suka, apa yang Siti tak selesa. With the support of her family and record label, Siti made an extreme decision. No more posing for publicity photos with male celebrities. This seemingly self-righteous behaviour was condemned by journalists and fellow artists. Agak kecoh juga lah ketika tu wartawan tak biasa dengan keadaan tu. Ada rakan-rakan artis saja juga yang condemn saya. Dia kata tak nak buat macam tu, baik pergi balik kampung jadi ustazah apa semua kan. The backlash affected young city deeply, and she soon reached her breaking point when an article criticising her stand surfaced. Ada satu magazine uh, memaparkan pendapat-pendapat artis lain tentang keputusan Siti dan itu pertama kali saya lihat uh, beliau menangis. Although distraught, the teenager would not budge and, to her surprise, people began to accept her decision. Saya tak sangka bila uh, di kaca televisyen semua memberi apa komen positif, semua sokong. Apa yang telah menjadi sejarah itulah sejarahnya sampai bila-bila. So dia bukan nak mengubah, tetapi itu adalah prinsip. In late 1996, City's first single, Jarad Percinta, was finally starting to climb the music charts. The single also made it to the finals of the Anugra Juara Lagu Music Award Show, where City was up against seasoned stars. And it was that very special voice that made everyone in the music industry finally notice her. Dan akhirnya, tak sangka lah saya terpilih untuk menjadi juara. After that, it was phenomenal. Then, my editor said, why don't you write about this girl? And I said, that was the girl I told you about. People were looking for a new um, Malaysian icon. She had the whole package when she came out. She had the looks, she had the ability to sing. Following the competition, City's relationship with the press evolved. Everybody wanted to be a friend. Everybody wanted to be uh, uh, in City's good book somehow. Because if you were in her good books, maybe she would answer more questions. And then because of that, she might be able to sell more papers. Even when the press flocked to her for headline stories, City responded by being true to herself. What no one could refute was that City's personality and demeanour were exemplary. Sesuatu yang sangat luar biasa yang boleh diperhatikan tentang Siti ni, kalau satu orang yang memang tak pernah minat dia dan tak pernah suka dia dan mungkin mendengar macam-macam cerita negatif mungkin daripada orang lain tentang Siti, bawa je jumpa untuk kali pertama insya-Allah akan jadi peminat setia lepas tu. Siti 
could be one of the most polite person I've ever met. And that hasn't changed until now. Because and it's not like it's not like she 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 is like playing another role, whatever. She's just born polite. Despite newfound fame and success, at heart, City was still a simple small town girl. But things were about to change. The city craze was just beginning. The studio that day, so busy, crowded. Yang kononnya nak jumpa Siti Nahaliza. This Siti Nahaliza macam kacau shock lah, takut. Semua the still hug me, pull my hand. Relax, relax, relax. Eh, ini benda ni biasa aja. Okay. With her fan base exploding. 18-year-old City was nominated for several categories in the ABP Awards, an annual People's Choice Popularity Awards show. All those many people say, ah, don't worry, it's popularity, but deep down inside, it matters. The more people love you, the more people vote for you, meaning the more fans you have, the more money you will make. Artist paling popular, City Norhaliza. City Norhaliza won an incredible four awards at the 1997 ABP, including the overall prize, beating seasoned pop stars and movie stars alike. You love City, you don't like City, you hate City. You cannot deny the fact that she can sing. She could sing the phone book, like they say. Even though it's early in her career, she deserved it because she could sing. We like to create heroes or whatnot because they represent us, right? And City represents a lot of girls out there, a lot of people out there who have big dreams but couldn't reach it. But City was starting to realise that being a star involves more than just singing. At any award, it's what you wear on the red carpet that is judged. And I was like, first impressions, honestly, was like, hmm, nice. But what's with the hair? <laughs> Brother D red carpet ni orang nak tengok pakaian juga. <laughs> pakaian, pakaian, pakaian. She's guilty of everything when it comes to image. The new starlet's rise to fame was unstoppable, but her lack of style was evident. It became the talk of the town. City Nurhaliza's popularity was rising at an unstoppable speed, and as her charm and talent were unquestionable. Critics needed to focus their attention on something else. They chose the countryside or kampong image. This is all the fashion that I know. This is all that I wear. This is all that my friend asked me to wear, my father asked me to wear, my sister asked me, I wear. Please enjoy it now because I know that I will evolve. She's guilty of like replicating what mistakes others have made. Oh, kata the tiara would be nice and she pakai tiara. And somebody said that, okay, extension, hair extensions and whatnot, and all this, I don't know, Goldilocks look, whatever, tapi not even blonde. Smooth, she done it. Too much of bidding. Pening kepala, like the disco tick punya disco ball, kan? To me, Siti tak perlu benda itu semua. Siti ni dulu antara artis yang sering di, di komen. Of course, saya cakap yes, saya memang artis yang bermula di kampung. Knowing her own lack of style or rural sensibility drew criticism from skeptics, Siti began initiatives to improve her image, just in time for her second album. They called me to do her makeup for the the cover. 17 years old is a young. So by that time myself make up a very fine makeup to show that her age. City was pleased with her makeup and was comfortable with Nurul. And then she advised as I see she wanted me as a makeup artist for the second album. Sampai hari inilah I become her makeup artist. Nurul was not the only one who was determined to help improve City's image. Who are going to be very famous? I think maybe this girl City. But uh, she's a big campo. I said, hey, it's good. I like it. I want to change the whole total look. But before designer Michael Ong got to work on City, her mother had set some guidelines. Ibu Siti memang berpesan kalau nak menjadi artis, tak boleh uh, berpakaian atau berpendampilan yang mencolok mata. So City immediately laid down the rules. Michael, you cannot do too sexy, but I want Beautiful. Michael Ong pun sendiri seorang yang sangat memahami 
dan uh, dia tahu apa yang saya tak boleh. The collar you cannot be lower than five and a half inch. You cannot be too tight at the sleeve there. The fabric cannot be too thin, and everything have to be full line. Tak boleh itu, tak boleh ni. Uh, dia pun dah biasa dengan uh, cutting badan Siti. Dia tahu mana macam nak menutup kelemahan, ya, nak menunjukkan kelebihan. Not 100% the fans will will like it, you know. Uh, maybe 80% they say, oh yeah, uh, good. Siti is not sexy. But 20% all the young people they say, yo, why so cover up? Siti was not the kind to take a back seat. She observed the workings around her and often learned very fast. Daripada awalnya makeup tu I suka hati I. Lama lama she take over sikit. Sikit dan sikit dan banyak. <laughs> you do your own makeup? So yeah, I just learn it from my uh, makeup artist and then now I'm if if I don't need her I can do my own and she looked fantastic in the interview. So the idea of Better myself is always in her head. City and her team often accepted criticism and improvised wherever possible. Me and Nuro Shuko, the Bika artist, we always uh, try to be uh, teach teach City how to be sexy because the clothes are not sexy. City, kadang pupus kon kampung lah. So you have to be, you know, figure out your body, you know, show, you know, the way how you move. <laughs> Michael yang selalu suka buat seksi seksi. Siti buat like dead, Siti like dead. Boleh ke Siti buat? Cubalah, cubalah, dia buat. How to move the skirt? How to play with your tray? From there, Siti really like to learn. Uh, asalkan ia komen yang membina, Siti akan ambil. Ya, yeah, kalau komen yang sekadar uh, mengusik atau nak menjatuhkan tu, Siti just let it go. Once more, City stood her ground. She held on to her decision to dress conservatively, but this time it was clear that it was the right move for her. Everybody from three years old to 83 years old were, were in love with her. So she understood the moral responsibility that went with that. So she said, no, I'm going to stay the way I am. Maybe I'm going to dress with a little bit more flair but I'm going to stay this way, no matter what people say. And I think she did the right thing, because the mass market is conservative. City released her second album, City Norhaliza 2, a year after her debut album. It was an instant hit. City, who was already a sensation in neighbouring Singapore, was now ready to take on a new territory. The Indonesian market is a very, very tough market because it's, it's quite closed. Saya pun sebenarnya Rasa macam was-was juga sebab kalau di Indonesia tu memang ramai penyanyi yang hebat kan. Indonesia had always been off limits to most Malaysian artists with only a handful finding success there. It was certainly a risk for the young rising star. Saya ditanya oleh wartawan Indonesia, kenapa Siti berani sangat nak masuk pasaran Indonesia? Saya kata sebenarnya saya datang nak berkongsi bakat. Kalau mereka tak kenal, mereka tak akan cinta, tak kenal mereka tak cinta. They want the artist to be real, to be authentic. City brought in this charisma, and the charisma says Malayness. The risk paid off. The Indonesians loved her, and the single from her second album, Aku Cinta Padamu, became a massive hit. Saya tak sangka banyak undangan ke Indonesia saya dapat. Stesen TV-nya selalu memanggil saya untuk buat persembahan. Cintaku bukan di atas kertas. Cintaku getaran yang sama. Although City knew she was popular there, she had no idea to what extent. Saya ingat macam biasa-biasa lah kot. Kan Siti Nuzha dia orang kenal macam tu je lah kan. Masuk ke mall. So, pilih-pilih baju. Kita boleh tengoklah ada yang berbisik-bisik di sini, Hiza, Siti Hiza. Siti masuk pretty room, kemudian penuh orang dekat floor tu sampai satu mall tu dibuat pengumuman. Ada Siti Nohaliza di dalam mall tu. Keluar je saya tengok penuh orang depan saya. Jadi, apa yang berlaku adalah kami tak boleh keluar. Jadi, security datang, bawa Siti keluar dan keluar daripada mall tu. Jadi, di situ saya lihat, wow. Dahsyat juga penerimaan orang Indonesia, kan? Peminat-peminat Indonesia kata terhadap saya.
Surya Records Company had been managing City's career for over two years, but because City's father only signed for her as a recording artist, it meant that City was free to choose her management team. In 1998, City Nurhaliza Productions, SNP, was established to manage City's career. Dulu arwah ayah saya, tempat yang tertinggi ya, dalam City Nurhaliza Production, begitu juga dengan Mak. Ya, mereka berdua adalah bos kami. Saya sebagai pekerja, saya menjalankan tugas saya dan ini sebenarnya adalah bisnes family yang saya hadiahkan untuk membalas jasa baik family saya. Kan? City's brother Ayi and his wife Rosie gave up their careers and were appointed as her managers. A lot of people said yes, the family would have taken advantage of her and stuff like that. But then again, better your family than not your family, right? <laughs> Yang selalu terjadi kepada artis ya, yang teraniaya adalah uh, penipuan, kan? Tetapi bila kita bekerja dengan keluarga, kita tak boleh berbuat sesuatu yang tak elok di belakang dia. City for now was wanted everywhere. Invitational shows, TV shows, and even national events were incomplete without her performance. Bukan saja menyanyi atas pentas, tapi saya kena buat shooting, fotografi, uh, kena bertemu dengan peminat. Saya boleh kata kita tidak pernah bercuti. Satu bulan ada 30 hari. 29 hari kerja. There were times when City pushed herself too hard to the point of risking health. Pernah saya membuat persembahan satu hari sampai tiga show. Ya, eh, sampai demam, tak boleh menyanyi pun still kena menyanyi juga. With all the responsibilities and workload it would have seemed like City was heading for burnout. Within five years, City Nurhaliza had made seven albums, endorsed multiple brands, and was on every single entertainment show on Malaysian television, as well as traveling to Indonesia for shows. City was starting to feel the burden of her success. I cannot manage it. City can manage it. Strong woman, iron lady, I think. She was a workhorse and she was a caged bird. City was constantly in the spotlight. Her fans just couldn't get enough of her. Say, of course, I hilang privacy. Yelah, bila orang dah datang dengan kita nak bingung apa-apa semua, saya tak boleh menolak. Saya tak boleh cakap no. Kadang-kadang, I, I, I cakap dengan City juga. Kau macam seko binatang seka, City. Pernah terfikir juga, biarkanlah saya, saya nak relax, saya nak macam pergi mana-mana pun, uh, orang tak tengok ke. Work ruled City's life, and she dealt with pressure by working even harder on her performances. All her performances have, have been standouts because she takes the time to think about it. So when she performed traditional song, you know that City brings sexy back to us. With that outfit, with that dancing, whether awkward, whether a bit of uh, uh, indulgent, but I think it's still very sexy for me. And when she does all these ballads and whatnot, you can see uh, how consumer she is. And then I think that's how she connects with people anyway, is her honest singing. Despite City's success, her performances were confined to variety and award shows, promotional road shows and music videos. However, she had yet to perform an entire concert all by herself. In October 1999, at the age of 20, City was finally given a chance to perform a live solo concert. Her debut concert, held at the Bukit Jalil Indoor Stadium in Kuala Lumpur, mesmerized her audience. And although ticket sales did not hit their target, it became a much talked about event, even across the causeway in Singapore. In Singapore, the industry is very simple. Whatever is happening in Malaysia, whether the movie industry is now the in thing, Singapore will probably uh, be liking the same thing. The following year, City honoured her international fans by planning her first debut concert outside of Malaysia in Singapore. But unbeknown to her and her team, her concert schedule clashed with that of an international megastar. Pada waktu itu, memang tak pernah tahu pun dalam jarak masa yang terdekat tu ada konsert Mariah Carey. Tetapi tiba-tiba dia jadi satu berita besar di Singapura tentang kedua-dua konsert ni yang back to back ni. Mariah Carey's Rainbow Tour concert in Singapore was scheduled five days before City's concert. This left City and her management 
unsure if they could sell tickets or would have to face a loss. Kita melihat uh, compare harga tiket City lebih mahal daripada tiket Maria Carey. Kita lagi takut. But any doubts City and her team had were put to rest when they got their first report back from Singapore. Apabila um, kita nak bertolak ke Singapura, keluar story yang sangat besar tentang jualan tiket City sold out pada hari itu. When an artist is big in this region, means they outsell the foreign counterparts, definitely. The concert was a success. City did not only entertain her audience that night, she moved them. There was really genuine respect and a, an adulation that they go there because they want to see her success. They want to see her do great things. And you can feel that in the air. And of course, one of the songs, I, I cried. <laughs> Riding on her Singapore success, City went back to the location of her first solo concert in KL and planned a really ambitious performance. Bagi saya mega concert tu yang yang terbaik yang pernah saya hasilkan untuk Siti Mahaliza lah. The mega concert held at the Bukit Jalil Indoor Stadium on the 30th of June 2001 was not just a concert for the audience, it was a living dream for City herself. Konsep Mega ni menceritakan tentang apa yang saya nak buat daripada kecil dan cita-cita saya. Saya nak jadi polis tetapi saya tukarkan dengan kawat senyap. Ami Wolf, tentera laut dengan dia punya 80 orang tu main senapang tu umpamanya. Saya pergi ke Lumut buat latihan bersama dengan senjata sampai saya luka-luka semua. Lepas tu segmen orang kampung. Wah, penuh tu. Siam Salim masuk orang bersorak dia nak beca. Gimnastik. <laughs> saya pergi belajar dengan guru gimnas uh, negara. Saya suka main alat muzik. Dia main magic show. Bukan apa hilangkan diri lah macam-macam. Nanti dia terbang. Pada hari betul di konsert tu saya kena uh, flying fox tu uh, daripada hujung bumbung stadium Putra Bukit Jalil saya turun sampailah ke pentas utama nyanyian. Ah oh, memang gila. <laughs> saya memang gila. The concert was sold out and City's performance was the talk of the town. In the same year, 22-year-old City was also listed in the Malaysian Book of Records as the most awarded artist, having won 52 awards throughout her career. This included the Gold Award at the Shanghai Music Festival and two awards at the South Pacific International Song and Singing Competition. She went out and she competed in the Asian market and she won. But winning has its downside. Some envious and some jealous and also fascinated why this girl keep winning and winning awards. Nah, stress juga apabila dia menang kita tak sanggup nak dengar. Ah, Siti. Asyik asyik Siti. Ah, Siti lagi. <laughs> How can someone be so consistent? You are the winner. You look to the right. You shake their hands. You shake their hands and you shake their hands and you go out and you say first God and you say parents and you say fans and you say, I love you, and then you go down. <laughs> In 2002, City was crowned the Voice of Asia at the Voice of Asia singing competition held in Kazakhstan. The same year, and for the next three years, she won Malaysia's favourite artist at the MTV Asia Awards. It's good that she, she wins an award for Malaysia, so that people know there is a talent, and that talent is worth pushing. As Malaysians, we should be very, very proud of the fact that, that she has really upped our image in the region wherever she goes. In April 2005, another one of City's dreams came true. Finally, a chance to perform a concert at the Royal Albert Hall. Royal Albert Hall. Hmm. When I first heard about that, I was like, are you sure? I think at that point of time, she's probably thinking about the international market, about trying to uh, do something that would be different again. Pertama kali jejak kaki ke Royal Albert Hall, rasa uh, terharu. Satu macam semangat yang berkobar-kobar, satu kebanggaan yang sangat untuk saya sebagai anak seni kan. Hey, sit. 
City, London. Lipis, from Lipis, Lipis to London. Saya sebenarnya nak buktikan bahawa, okay, um, walaupun saya tidak punya segulung ijazah ke, tapi dengan ke keazaman, dengan kesungguhan, semua orang boleh berjaya. Anak penuri getah ke atau mereka yang sekadar belajar biasa-biasa pun sebenarnya boleh berjaya. Semua terpulang pada diri kita. Macam mana kita nak mengubah hidup kita. As always, Siti presented her genuine and true self. But this time, to an even wider audience. At least Siti's not trying to be Celine Dion by singing English songs in London. She was actually singing Malay songs. So, ada satu segment tu kita tunjuklah Zapir, Joget, Ina dan sebagainya menggunakan penari-penari. Konsepnya macam kita duduk depan laman rumah, um, kau bertanda lah situ. Masing-masing macam konsep Joget Lambak gitu. So, we have fun lah. She is the best and she is the the icon Malaysia, you know, can do the concert in our home. Can let all the international people to see that our Malaysian with our beautiful singer, beautiful voice, beautiful rhythm and beautiful clothes. The concert was the concert, but there was this underlying story about somebody in her life. By 2005, Siti Nurhaliza was at the height of her popularity. But at the age of 26, the unmarried Malay girl was considered past her prime by gossip mongers. Her shelf life of being a single girl was a constant hot topic in the media. You have arrived. You are wealthy, you are famous. Tapi, you lack of kasih sayang daripada seorang lelaki. Macam mana dia nak berjumpa dengan orang? You tell me, bila dia nak pergi keluar? As I always had this feeling that the fairy tale will end wonderfully, fabulously when Siti Nahaliza actually married her sweetheart, a long-time childhood sweetheart, who was a teacher maybe, who was a, who was a dentist. Of course, the fairy tale didn't turn out that way. In early 2005, Siti was rumoured to be romantically linked to a married man. The news was nothing short of sensational. Our society has this thing about you uh, going out with a married person, blah, blah, blah. But that was not all. She was even accused of being a homewrecker, the perfect girl from the country who had done no wrong throughout her career, had just dropped the ultimate moral bombshell on her doting fans. Finally, 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 let's real dirt. Let's dig. The unlikely prince was 47-year-old Malaysian businessman Datuk Khaled Mohamed Jiwa, who eventually got a divorce. I tanya Siti, Siti, siapa lelaki itu? Ya Allah, business partner. Uh, hubungan kami ini uh, tidak kepada uh, cinta pandang pertama, tak. Saya mengenali beliau uh, atas urusan kerja dan saya memang tidak menaruh hati langsung pada beliau. Tak baik <laughs> menaruh hati langsung pada beliau ketika itu. Ya. But Datuk Khaled came with baggage. Not only was he a divorcee, but he had four children with his previous wife. These were going to be tough times for City. The family halang for the first time. Family City masih lagi mengekalkan cara orang lama-lama. Kalau hal-hal berkaitan dengan lelaki, anak perempuan, janganlah nak bercerita pasal lelaki depan parents. Sebab itu memang permulaan memang sangat sukar. Siti macam berlawan dengan diri saya sendiri kan untuk menjadi seorang yang lebih berani. Tapi untuk berhadapan dengan kedua ibu bapa ni bukan satu perkara yang mudah. Sebelum dia nak naik atas pelamin tu, I tell you it's not easy. Dia betul yang dekat dengan dia pun is she's having a very hard time. So I advise you kalau you rasa you nak like this man, go for it. Saya kuatkan semangat kerana saya belum jadi seorang yang lebih matang kan. Kerana itu saya bersuara, saya bercakap, berbincanglah. It took some time for City to convince her family. Awalnya memanglah susah nak terima kan. Uh, tapi uh, Siti adalah orang yang selagi tak dapat restu uh, ibu dengan ayah dia, dia tak akan berkahwin. Mereka uh, membuat keputusan untuk berkahwin apabila arwah abah memberi restu. Winning the consent of her conservative parents was tough, but City's die-hard fans were proving to be even tougher. Pada waktu tu, peminat dia pun ada yang dah berpecah dua, ada yang setuju, ada yang tak setuju, ada yang mengundangkan saya sebagai 
uh, perantara ya untuk menyampaikan apa uh, perasaan mereka. Saya adalah public figure, saya adalah kepunyaan masyarakat dan mereka sudah pastinya lah nak melihat seseorang yang sesuai, yang lebih baik, bla 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 bla, bla kan. Despite the risk of losing her fans, Siti was adamant with her decision. Tetapi Siti selalu cakap kalau memang tak ada rezeki dan orang dah tak minat dia, uh, dia tak menyesal kerana bagi dia perkahwinan adalah satu perkara dan keputusan yang sangat besar yang dia buat dalam hidup dan dia hendak orang percaya bahawa dia tahu apa yang dia buat dan dia tahu dia ada risiko. Failing to convince many of her fans, Siti resorted to what she knew best. Nak menceritakan segala-galanya bukan satu perkara yang mudah kan? Jadi saya gunakan lagu untuk saya suarakan apa isi hati saya kan. Jadi saya menulis biarlah rahsia tu. You can see the underlying meaning is like you know put yourself in my shoes. I mean how would it feel to be uh, to be talked about every day and somehow it appeased a lot of people you know. First time you hear you heard the song and you know she was going through hell at that point and then the song came out you went like kesian dia give her space bukan kita yang nak kahwin itu cinta dia the 17th of july 2006 city and datuk khaled called for a press conference despite not knowing what the announcement was about the press turned out in full force kami memberitahu pun pada media dalam keadaan last minute dan tak apalah saya just Lalui je lah dia dengan dengan tenangnya. Siti and Datuk Khaled finally announced their wedding plans. As Siti's loyal fans stood by her, so did her loyal stylist. Good. We can do your uh, 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 your your dream wedding gowns. You remember? He said yes. Barbie doll. Semua nak ingat buat kat kampung sebab di kampung lah tempat yang best. Simple it was not to be. TV stations were bidding to broadcast the wedding live. Even the Indonesian media were interested in the wedding event of the decade. When I'm preparing the wedding gown, I never been accept so many call, phone call from all the reporter, all the newspaper. The star-studded affair on the 28th of August 2006 was graced by royal families, politicians, VIPs, celebrities, friends and family. The event was not short of performances. Many of her peers in the region performed that night. The wedding itself was to me quite a circus because so it didn't even feel like a wedding. It was it looked like a mock wedding. I never seen the reporter so many pushing each another. Yo, I was holding the train. I tell you, it's like <laughs> she's such a star. <laughs> With the whole nation watching, Siti openly declared her love for her husband through a brand new song, Cahaya Cinta, composed and written by her. Bila melihat dia bahagia, kan? itu pilihan dia dan memang nampak sangat kebahagiaan dia. Dia rasa macam okay, dia happy lah. From this point forward, Siti's life evolved. No, dia bukan binatang dalam sekus lagi. Datuk membawa dia satu kebebasan yang mana setiap manusia menghargai kehidupan ini. Sabtu Ahad akan pergi tengok wayang, keluar makan dengan anak-anak. Mereka akan tetapkan satu masa untuk bercuti dalam negara bersama. Yang mana Siti tak pernah buat masa muda-muda dulu. Uh, beliau telah menetapkan bahawa uh, keluarga di tempat pertama dan Kerja di uh, tempat kedua sebab kawin saya cuba seimbangkan kehidupan dan saya rasa happy. Two and a half years after gaining the new man of her life, Siti lost the man who had been her rock all these years, her father. Dia pergi tu dalam keadaan yang sekejap. Ya, uh, arwah sakit, uh, kena serangan jantung. Dia rasa diri dia macam kehilangan something very valuable yang mana dia tak dapat penggantinya. Kita dapat tengok yang tak henti-henti mengalirkan air mata Siti. 
Siti memang ada mengatakan kepada pres pada waktu itu, uh, Abah adalah Siti dan Siti adalah Abah. Uh, sedih tapi saya terus kuatkan semangatlah. For a while, Siti kept work at bay. But soon she returned to the public eye and began venturing into other interests and fulfilling other dreams. On the 30th of March 2010, Siti and her business partners launched Simplicity, a brand now synonymous with Siti Nurhaliza. Simplicity is a company that I've been working on for a long time. And I finally achieved my goal when my husband and other companies have been working together. And it became the Simplicity. Musically, City put herself back into the driver's seat. After 16 years as a hit maker of Malay language music, City instead decided to focus on her debut English language album. Hopefully with this album, we'll be able to achieve and add on to another side of City that nobody knows. Saya membuat album ni adalah untuk mencabar diri sendiri, ya bukan untuk menunjukkan orang oh saya dah buat album Inggeris. Tengok tak. Anything that I heard uh, about the troubles that I might have with City having to sing in English, nothing. There was no problems at all. She came in there and sounded like Mariah, sounded like Celine. Released on the 26th of September 2011, the album was produced by City's stepson, Adib Khalid. I hope that the buyers can receive the album as well. That's the most important thing. The first 16 years of this gem's life was of hardship. The subsequent 16 years was of stardom and triumphs. I think the success is not just because of myself. It's been a great honor to actually know and discover Siti and to know where she is now. Kita melihat perjalanan luar biasa dia tu, perjalanan yang kita rasa macam Siti tu diberi tuah atau lap yang tak henti tu. Now at only 32, Siti Nurhaliza is already a living legend. What the future would bring is anyone's guess. So tahu yang nanti saya mempunyai anak saya juga ya bersama dengan suami ya, dan saya boleh menjadi orang yang boleh memberi semula kepada orang lain moral of the whole city story it doesn't hurt to be nice people thought like bad girls go to london kind of thing city went to london anak mas malaysia dan beliau disayangi itu yang paling penting sangat saya disayangi and if there's one word to describe city probably the word is gifted and i think she has made full use of a gift. Mm -hmm.